This episode of Art Block was brought to you by the supporters of my Patreon. To learn how you can support the show, be sure to check the description below for the link to my Patreon page. Hello, and welcome to Art Block, the show where we talk about art and how it's made. I'm your host, Spirit, and today we'll be talking about where to post your artwork when it comes to the internet. So, when it comes to posting your artwork online, there are a few things to keep in mind. The first thing is, how protected do you want your artwork to be? Sad to say, but if you're looking to post your artwork online, there's a decent chance that it's going to be stolen. I went into more detail on preventing art theft in my art theft video, check the card if you haven't seen that. Anyways, the thing to keep in mind with this is that there are some websites that will feature a watermark option, which will essentially place a pre-generated watermark onto your artwork, usually somewhere in the center. From my understanding, the only one of the websites on this list that actually features this is DeviantArt. When it comes to art websites, DeviantArt is probably one of the more well-known and has a very active user base. DA is also one I would consider to be one of the better options for building up your gallery because of their organization system. DeviantArt also features the group feature, where you can join groups and post artwork to be seen by hundreds, if not thousands of people. In the art world, DA is basically the equivalent to YouTube for how big and varied it is. Unfortunately, there are some downsides to using DA. While there are a lot of users on the website, it is pretty hard to get a decent viewership due to just how many people are using the website and how much is going through at once. You'll have to join and post to a lot of groups before you'll get a decent following, and even then it takes a while. There's also the issue of the system updates. Now, DA is nowhere near YouTube, and thankfully they do have a little bit better practice when it comes to how they announce their changes. But to use an example, there was a recent change to the website's URL system. Now, I had ordered my business cards with the old URL system, and they announced the change the day that the cards had been shipped. Granted, the card part wasn't their fault, but they could have given at least a two weeks warning before changing it. At least they'll tell us when something has changed, unlike a certain other platform I know. The last thing to know about DeviantArt isn't really a pro or a con, it's just something I've noticed, but DA's color palette isn't exactly the most... appealing? Granted, it's not early 2000s rainbow by any measure, but I personally feel like given that a lot of websites have a darker theme, the grayish green look isn't that great given the fact that we're looking for art. The next thing to ask yourself is, how many views do you want in comparison to your fanbase? If you simply want your art to be seen by a lot of people, then Twitter is a good way to go. This is where the advantage of linear timelines come into play. Since everything is being shown to you one after the other, every time something appears in your timeline, you are contributing at least one view. There's also the advantage of the interaction system. Unlike DeviantArt, Twitter has retweets and likes which get substantially more views on a single piece of art than the former option. Every like, comment, and retweet puts the original tweet into the timelines of other people and gets another pair of eyes on your work. However, like before, there are some problems using Twitter. While Twitter is good for getting people to see your work, it isn't the best when it comes to the longevity of your gallery and viewership. For one, unless you dedicate your account to art and only art, it's incredibly difficult to find a specific piece of artwork. There is no search bar or titling system, and the only means of finding an older work is to manually scroll through someone's photos until you find the original drawing. Twitter also isn't the best for developing a fanbase. Since people will usually just fave and keep scrolling, the odds of them actually following you for your work are somewhat low. Not to mention, Twitter actually compresses images down, so it's difficult to view stuff in full resolution. Also, just as a fair warning to everyone under 18, there is no official content filter on Twitter, so there's an easy chance that you could accidentally have some not-so-friendly art pop up on your feed, depending on what hashtags you look up, that is. Personally, I just keep scrolling like, hey, it's no big deal, people like what they like, but if you're younger and would rather not see that kind of stuff, then I would suggest maybe holding off on the art side of Twitter. However, if you're looking for a site that's a bit more friendly, one great place to go is Amino. And before anyone asks, no, I'm not sponsored by Amino. Amino is essentially an app that you use on your phone and allows you to join different groups based off of your interests. From my understanding, the app is very friendly to all ages and is generally a troll-free place. Which is great because you won't have to worry as much about people being overly rude to you or coming across unwanted material. I personally haven't used the app, but from what I've heard there's the main Amino app and then there's specific Amino groups where you can talk to people with similar interests. I have actually been considering getting an Amino account for art slash furry stuff, but I'm still a little undecided, so if there's a good portion of you guys who are on Amino and like to see me on that platform, tell me in the comments. I might jump on it if people are interested. The only con I can really think of when it comes to using Amino is the fact that the app is strictly on mobile devices. This is fine if you're someone who's cool with using their phone, but especially for artists who do a lot of work on their computer, posting artwork can take a couple extra steps and overall be a pain in the butt. 
Personally, I think if Amino really wanted to blow the other platforms out of the water, it would be great for them to have a desktop version of the app with the same features, but what they do is ultimately up to them. Now, what if you're looking for a whole website specifically to fit your interest? Well, this is where a website called Fur Affinity comes into play. Admittedly, this is the only one that I know that focuses specifically on a particular fandom, but for those interested in anthropomorphism, then this might just be the place for you. Fur Affinity has its appeal not only in the fact that it's based around a singular interest, but it also uses the same sort of gallery setup as DeviantArt. Not only that, but the search options are a little more extensive when it comes to finding artwork you want. While I personally can't vouch for it, FA also has a save for work filter which will hide a lot of the adult artwork from those who have said filter on. The filter is automatically on for anyone who doesn't have an account, and there are also some options to have your account viewable only to those with FA accounts. Due to the fandom-focused nature of Fur Affinity, it's also a lot easier to find clients for paid work since everyone has a similar interest on the site. Unfortunately, one of the issues with FA that I've heard of is that the site has had cases where passwords have been leaked. So definitely make a new password that's different from all of your other accounts if you're planning to use this site. I'll also give fair warning that FA has some pretty interesting stuff on it, so I wouldn't recommend signing up until you're over 18 and are ready for some more interesting art. Alright, so a good portion of the platforms I mentioned are good for showing off art, but I want to discuss two platforms that I've heard people use quite a bit for business, and those are Facebook and Instagram. While I have personally used DeviantArt for a majority of my run, I've heard a lot of people will use these platforms for developing businesses, and I can kind of see why. Like DA and Amino, Facebook has a group function which allows you to find people with similar interests. The general layout of Facebook and the higher amount of page organization compared to, say, Twitter, allows for users to build a more business-friendly page. It's also often cited that Facebook's crowd is more of an adult audience, with their largest part of their demographics being shown to be aged 25 to 34. From my understanding, the reason why Facebook is used by a lot of businesses is because it's easy enough to organize a page to show off what your business can do, but it's also accessible enough to the average audience. Granted, since Facebook isn't quite as popular as Twitter or DeviantArt, you might have some difficulty building up an audience. However, a lot of the business pages I've seen on Facebook tend to look a little bit more professional than the previous two mentioned. I should also mention that if you're a one-man band, so to speak, when it comes to running your business, Facebook's group function can give you the opportunities to find collaborators who can promote and expand your business. Just be aware that a lot of the people you'll be dealing with on the site are going to be of an older age, so try to carry a more professional air if you can. Now as for Instagram, I personally have never used the platform myself, but one big advantage to Instagram is its photo sharing capability. I've heard a lot of artists and creators have been able to start on Instagram and grow their audience quickly due to the friendliness of the platform. While Twitter also has a form of instant messaging, from my understanding Instagram's private messaging system is a little easier for upholding conversations and getting information a lot faster. Not only that, but Instagram has a desktop feature, which will make it a lot easier to upload photographs and digital pieces of art. Sadly, like all the platforms before, Instagram does have a few cons. For one, if you're creating art of an adult-oriented nature, you probably won't be able to post that on Instagram. I think there are certain things you're allowed to post, such as artistic nudity, but X-rated content from what I know is prohibited. Another issue with Instagram is that you have a lot of younger people and a lot of trolls. Of course, there's nothing wrong with having a bunch of younger people on your platform. It just means that if you're looking for financially stable people to commission you, then you might have a harder time by comparison to some of the other platforms. Trolls are something to be aware of too. They're on every platform, but just be prepared to have some thick skin and sometimes swallow your pride. And those are some of the websites where you can post your artwork. Are there any websites that you feel should have been on this list, and what do you guys think of the aforementioned sites? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. It supports me and is practically free. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter and DeviantArt where I post artwork and updates about the show. Want to chat with me? Well, I have a Discord server where you can do just that. I'm online pretty frequently, so make sure to check the description below for all necessary links. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Spirit, and I'll see you next time.